Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of the Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to tell you that I have the best group of viewers in the world. I'm not kidding. You guys are the absolute best. You come from all over the world. You come repeatedly to watch my videos and you say the nicest things. And you get along fine with everybody, and I just love it. I really do. This is what the internet should be like all the time. Of course, we know it's not, but this is what it should be like. Congratulations to you for being one of the good people. I have four items I want to talk to you about, uh, talk to you about today in the news. The first one is an update on Cheryl Atkinson. Atkinson versus DOJ for government surveillance. If you're not familiar with this story, Cheryl Atkinson was a reporter for CBS, and while she was reporting for CBS, her computer was hacked by agents of the government, the U.S. government. And she has been fighting now for 11 years trying to get somebody to take responsibility for what happened. 11 years and finally she's gotten a little tidbit. I want to read it to you. After more than 11 years of fighting we have our small victory. <clears throat> a clerk's default against one of the ex-agents involved in the surveillance of me and others. That's the first such decision we know of in a case of this type of the government spying on a journalist. That's all thanks to the support, support <coughs> excuse me, of thousands who have supported a legal fund started by First and Fourth Amendment advocates as well as whistleblower advocates. I'm extremely grateful. But as I've uh, sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble reading this. But as I've separately noted, the ex-agent supposedly died after we got this default. <laughs> uh, how odd. So we cannot get critical information from him pointing to the larger players, which is what we really wanted. So they got a default judgment against a minor player in the government, but he's supposedly dead. And it, it seems odd to me that she says he's supposedly dead. That means she doesn't know for certain he is. Apparently the government is saying he is, but she's seen no proof of that. One other federal agent we know of, an ex-Secret Service agent who has since served years in prison for separate corruption, is getting dismissed from the case because, and I kid you not, the judge is simply taking his word for it that he wasn't one of the agents involved in the spying operation because he said so in a deposition. The judge, for whatever reason, has decided to accept this word of an ex-con who has been convicted of other felony crimes while working for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Baltimore under Rod Rosenstein during the same time period that this surveillance operation against me and others took place. It's like asking a robber if he's guilty and when he says no, just dismissing the case. But that's where we stand with him right now. This, if you, I'm going to put the link in the description and you can read this for yourself, but it is just mind-boggling the games that the government plays to keep from taking responsibility for anything. Incredibly, the way it works, we have to ask permission from the government guilty parties to get documents and other information, and of course the government is saying no. Again, it's like the prosecutor having to ask the robber for permission to gather evidence and interview witnesses, and the robber just says no. You know, guilty people are always going to say no. It seems to me the court should be compelling them 
to provide the documentation. That's the way it normally works, or at least it used to work. But in in Cheryl's case, it's incredible. They just they don't comply and they don't get slapped down by the court. The final frustration I will express today is that in a recent filing, the judge adopts, as if true, all kinds of fact errors presented by the Department of Justice, even though these fact errors are contrary to the clear documentary evidence with the documents specifically referred to and presented in our complaint. I'm not sure why and or how this happens. It's hard to know if the judge simply isn't reading the material our side has presented or why that would be or why that would be. It's difficult to imagine she would intentionally misrepresent the facts. Whatever the case, there seems to be no recourse on that for me, the plaintiff. I can tell you how it works. The judge is corrupt. It's that simple. The judge is corrupt, and the judge is going to go along with the DOJ, and, and you know, they're not going to intentionally break the law. They're going to try to skirt around the law and avoid the law as much as possible, but they're not going to break it intentionally. I mean, they might, it might end up breaking some law, but even if they do, who's going to try them? Somebody else who's corrupt? <laughs> it's just... It's the 11 years she's been fighting this, 11 years, and she still has yet to get any justice. It's ridiculous. The second item I have, the title is, Children Allowed to Socially Transition Face Psychological Harm, Review Warns. Now, this is something that's been, you know, a hot topic for some time now, the, the transgender thing. And they're finally, they, uh, scientists, are finally starting to do some research on it. And guess what they found? It's not good for the kids. <laughs> what a surprise, huh? Prepubescent children should not be put on the same pathway as older adolescents who wish to identify as the opposite gender, the final review is expected to say. NHS England this is the National Health Service of Great Britain, said it would instead move young people who believed that they were trans into regional centers that take a more holistic approach to treatment and look at other mental health or medical issues they may have. Last month, the NHS announced an immediate ban on prescribing puberty blockers to under-18s unless they are part of a clinical trial. Ministers said the landmark decision was in children's best interest and would help to ensure youngsters who feel their gender is not the same as their sex are treated using medical evidence. As we know, some of the recent revelations that have come out, there is no, there, there's no research to show that this is good for kids. And there is now research coming out that shows not only is it not good for them, it's really bad for them. A government source said we are absolutely clear about the importance of biological sex, particularly in the context of safeguarding and the role parents must play in decisions about their children. Our guidance for schools is clear that in nearly every case, they should not support the social transition of primary aged children, including not using pronouns that do not align with the child's sex. I would question why they would say in nearly every case. I can't imagine a case where a prepubescent adolescent should be allowed to do anything having to do with transitioning, whether it's uh, puberty blockers or social transitioning or anything. They're too young. They, they, they don't have the ability to make up their own minds. And their parents should definitely be involved in the decision. But we're seeing some progress in this that we're starting to get some actual research that's saying, okay, this might not be such a good idea. And so they're starting to back off from all of the gung-ho, you know, what's cut off their breasts, cut off their penises, remove their ovaries, make them completely sterile, give them puberty blockers that will destroy their bodies. 
and then let them say that they're the opposite sex. So this third article that I have is the CDC is quietly admitting to COVID policy failures. <laughs> Isn't that interesting that they would do it quietly? In so many words and data, CDC has quietly admitted that all of the indignities of the COVID-19 pandemic management have failed. Masks, distancing, lockdowns, closures, and especially the vaccines. All of it failed to control the pandemic. Nevertheless, once the COVID-19 vaccines were rolled out with a new large wave of the Delta strain spreading across the U.S. in July, August 2021, even after eight months of the vaccines taken by half of Americans, instead of admitting policy error that the COVID vaccines do not much control virus spread, our public health administration doubled down, attempting then to compel vaccination on as many more people as could be threatened by mandates. That didn't work out too well, as seen when the large Omicron wave hit the country during December 2021 January 2022, in spite of some 10% more of the population getting vaccinated from September through December of 2021. Basically, what the government did, and it wasn't just the United States, it was worldwide. What the governments of the world did was they filled people full of fear. This is the end of the world. You're going to die if you don't get the vaccine. You need to stay in your house. You need to cover up. You need to wear a mask. And they based this on no scientific evidence whatsoever. And now we know that. So let's hope that the next time something like this happens, people will be a little more skeptical and say, wait a minute, let's, before we go down this road, let's do a little more research and make sure we know what we're talking about. But of course we know that won't happen. And the final item I have is EcoHealth Alliance, uh, president to be questioned about gain-of-function research at the Chinese lab. Congress is finally going to call this guy on the carpet. If, if you're not familiar with EcoHealth Alliance, they are the ones that were used to skirt the law and get around the fact that you're not allowed to do gain-of-function research in the United States by taking the funding that they got from our government and using it to, to fund the COVID research lab in Wuhan, where the virus broke loose. <laughs> I tell you what, the more that we find out the truth about what's going on, the more discouraging it becomes thinking about the kind of governments that we're living under, where they're willing to lie, they're willing to do whatever they want to do, they're willing to ignore the law, and they're willing to just do whatever they feel like doing, without any regard to the health of their citizens. And that's you and me, the people that should be their primary focus. Ah, that's the news for the day. And as you know, I always pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time and that you'll be healthy and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that God will do all of those things for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.